Peter Schrager, NFL Network, Good Morning Football co-host, and uh, Good Morning Football live from L.A. for Super Bowl week starting on Monday at 7 a.m. Eastern. Peter, how would you recap the week for somebody who didn't, let's say somebody was out of the country, didn't know what happened, and you said, hey, what happened in the NFL? How would you recap it? So the biggest long shot in NFL history to make the Super Bowl, made the Super Bowl on a Sunday. Tom Brady retired on a Tuesday, and before he could even get his bouquets, uh, one of the NFL coaches sued the NFL and two NFL football teams over uh, systematic racism and hiring practices, and that was just the start of the week. And now we've had further that we've had some different coaching hires. We've had some other controversies. It is the NFL we're living in right now, and I don't think any of it should uh, – should 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 be be mentioned without saying that hey the Flores thing should be number one number two number three and yet the way the NFL works it's like all right the Super Bowl's on uh, next week and I don't know if it's still going to be top of mind because that's how fast the news cycle works. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Adam Schefter tweeted the Niners offensive coordinator Mike McDaniel arrived in South Florida last night for his head coaching interview with the Dolphins. Cowboys offensive coordinator Kellen Moore scheduled for his head coaching interview with the Dolphins on Saturday. How attractive is that Dolphins job right now? Yeah, I could tell you that that I know from Mike's case, he definitely wants the job. It's a chance to be an NFL head coach. And, uh, you know, that's the point. It's a lot of these guys, they still want these jobs because how do I know I'm ever going to get another opportunity to get in there? So if you're a Mike McDaniel or a Kellen Moore, and, yes, you are walking into a situation where the, the last coach and the owner and the GM um, obviously had conflict and there's an ongoing lawsuit and all those things, but, hey, here's Mike McDaniel. He's been in the league since 2005. He's a 40-year-old guy. He's, he's been waiting his time, too, and he's like, I, I, I want to go for it. This is my job opportunity, and I would love to be the head coach of the Miami Dolphins. So he didn't withdraw his name from that. I can tell you that that interview is 1245 today is when he's going to be interviewing with the Dolphins. They are going to also interview Kellen Moore, so the decision won't be made today. But those are the two names I'm hearing right now, and, no, neither one of them are people of color. It's Mike McDaniel, boy wonder offensive coach, and it's – Kellen Moore, who's even younger offensive coach. And, you know, I know the optics aren't great for the NFL, but that is what has been the case going right up from Minnesota, where it's Harbaugh or Kevin O'Connell, to Jacksonville, where it seemed like at the last second it was either Doug Peterson or Rich Bisaccia. So uh, we've got a couple teams left, Texans and Saints. We'll see if if their hires do satisfy um, what I think is a great, great need for, you know, African-American and people of color to be head coaches in the NFL. I was wondering, Doug Peterson got the Jacksonville job. Do we know if Byron Leftwich was offered the job? Do not know that. Yeah. Do not know that. Don't, don't know if it got to that point. I know that they were very interested in Nathaniel Hackett, and he chose the Denver job, and that kind of made them restart their whole thing. What's interesting with that one is it breaks last night. <clears throat> either Adam Schefter, Ian Rapport, one of the insiders breaks it, and it happens – <clears throat> around 10 o'clock Eastern, and all right, everyone does their whole thing. Here's what Peterson is. Who didn't they hire? They fired Urban Meyer in week 14 of the NFL season. They interviewed Doug Peterson on December 28th. They were radio silent. They did not reach out to Doug Peterson. He didn't have a second interview until February 4th. I don't know what happened in those 40 days in between, but I don't remember a coaching uh, hire ever as drawn out and go with so many twists and turns than what the Jaguars did. The first candidate to interview in week 16 of the NFL season or week you know, right after the NFL season was Doug Peterson. Um, and then wow. they interviewed about 20 guys in between and then eventually hired Doug Peterson. Bizarre. But if you look at the, the, uh, the openings here in the offseason, the worst opening was where? I know everybody wants to be a head coach, but the worst opening is which team or was oh, which team? There was nine openings. A lot of those teams fire head coaches because of the situations that they're in. Um, see, the worst might also be with the greatest potential to build. And I think the team in the most questionable situation right now is the Houston Texans because they don't have that quarterback that they necessarily thought would be the quarterback. Now, is Davis Mills that guy? I don't know. He had a nice finish of the season. Um, but they are so – raw and so barren as far as just talent on the roster and then with no real direction of what they're going to be. New GM and Nick Casario, new president and Jack Easterby, and there's a hope that they make the right hire and they can build something there. We want to talk about an uphill battle going into Houston right now without any real thing to hang your hat on. It's certainly something that is from the ground zero of building an NFL team. 
Talking to Peter Schrager, NFL Network, Good Morning Football co-host and FoxSports.com senior national writer. The show will be in Los Angeles next week starting at 7 a.m. Eastern. I talked to a former TV executive last night, and I said, if you were still involved in this, would you offer Tom Brady a job as an analyst? And he said, if I'm Amazon, I just I put it out there that we'll give you $25 million a year and see if Tom would want to be an analyst. You know, let's say with uh, Al Michaels. What do you think of that? Yeah, I mean, that's, I don't know if money is what motivated this guy ever, though. That's the problem. Yeah. It's like I, you can dangle a lot of money in front of Tom Brady. It's never been what has been his, his main motivation. And you can say that he's made enough himself, his wife's made enough in her career. Like, I, I think the Manning situation truly makes the future of all these broadcasters interesting. Like, you know, Drew Brees did the playoff game and got you know, blasted everywhere because they thought that he wasn't interesting enough, and he had to, you know, check his phone and just say, this guy's terrible. Jason Witten, same thing. Meanwhile, the Mannings are sitting on their couch, and they're interviewing their friends and doing it on their terms, and I think Tom Brady's one of the few athletes that could say, eh, I actually want to do it X, Y, Z way, and I don't want to do it going on the road and being in Cincinnati to call a raiders Bengals game where I can be criticized by Joe Schmo on the, on the couch for how good I am at calling this. Um, well, I, think I suggested that you get Gronk and Brady and you could have your own, you know, Brady cast here. That's not bad. I, I think that's interesting. And it's on Brady's terms. As long as Brady can dictate where and how it's done, because I don't think I see Tom Brady wanting to call week 13, you know, uh, <laughs> Broncos Chargers in Denver because he's got, you know, Romo missed the day after Thanksgiving this year. I think he missed that Sunday, and people went nuts. Like, he's making how much money? How could he miss a game? <laughs> <laughs> guys, these guys, they, they do have a lot of power in these buildings, and I think Brady would have the ultimate power if he were to choose to work with one of these networks. I got Tony Dungy next hour, and I want to ask him, how do we fix the Rooney rule or update the Rooney? Like, what if it's not a tweak, or is it an overhaul? And what suggestions would he have? Because the Rooney rule came out when Tony got fired, and I think um, I'm trying to think who else. There were two black coaches who got fired at the same time, and I think that's when we had the Rooney rule that that came about. What do you think Tony would suggest on how to modify this? And we had Chris Carter on Good Morning Football today, very, very vocal in in the situation that the NFL head coaching um, world is in right now. And you know, I said, well, they've tried to do like financial incentives with draft picks and all that. And I think the problem is way, way, way more in the weeds than just, hey, can we meet with these guys? I think it starts with with – preparing young African-American assistants to be NFL head coaches. So it's not enough to just have a, a African-American defensive quarter. It's saying, okay, let's, let's get you every possible thing that you need so that you could walk in that room and you don't feel like you're up against it. And you don't feel like you're walking into a sham interview that you can wow them. And you could also just say, Hey, look at the tape and check my references. I shouldn't have to razzle and dazzle and, and do something any differently mm. than any of the counterparts who I'm interviewing with. I look at, there are so many great, Great young assistant coaches in the league right now, and so few of them got opportunities to interview for those head coaching jobs. And I think that's the issue. It's not just getting someone in the room. It's it's saying, hey, let's recognize these young assistants and let's groom them so that they're getting the hype and buzz that Kellen Moore is getting at age 30, that they're getting the hype and buzz that Sean McVay got at age 30. You know, you could name the young assistant coach that you. Like I look at Sean McVay's assistant head coach, and he's a running backs coach right now, and. In, in, in Los Angeles. I've gotten to know Thomas Brown really well. This guy is a former Georgia Bulldogs running back, beloved by the players, uh, is, is a huge asset to Sean McVay, and yet he was mentioned for the Miami Dolphins head coaching job briefly. How come he didn't get to interview for nine jobs? Where you know, Jonathan Gannon, who is going to be considered for all these jobs, is defensive coordinator of an Eagles team that lost in the wild card round. I just think it's not enough to just say, hey, we're going to give you, uh, you know, X, Y, and Z, an opportunity to interview. I think it really starts at a young age, 28, 29, 30, identifying people who aren't just assistant coaches but want to be head coaches and saying, let's not only prepare them for that, but let's prepare the rest of the league and give them opportunities to have the same networking that some of the white young assistant coaches have had. Yeah, that's well put. If you had one question for the commissioner next week, what would the question be? 
One question for the commissioner. My question would probably revolve around what was brought to light here. And it's the same question you just asked me, the same question you brought to Tony Dungy. Clearly, the Rooney rule is not merely enough. What else can we do? And how else can we actually do that with action and not just words? And I would love to think that there are answers there and that there is not only the commissioner, but every single person who is employed by the NFL and working with the NFL who is noticing what's going on in this hiring cycle and says, hey, here's my input, here are my two cents, and that's a collaborative effort in the decisions that are made moving forward. Dennis Green was the other coach who was fired, I think, the same time, 2002, when Tony Mm -hmm. was fired, and then they brought about the Rooney Rule. How would you uh, sum up Joe Burrow's month? (laughs) coolest kid in the world right? like what are you talking about this is almost, i i love the fact that his high school stadium's already named after him like it's like it's like everyone who knows the guy knows the guy all the lsu people love him i went to the game last week chiefs uh chiefs Bengals, and obviously it was all chiefs fans but there were pockets of Bengals fans and the amount of lsu burrow fans we saw and i would go to them are you an lsu fan you're a Bengals fan i'm a joe burrow fan i'm like all right that's pretty cool this guy's the man and I, I don't know. I don't know if they've got it. what it takes to go in as a team with one player with Super Bowl experience and beat the Rams in their building. Yeah. But I don't know if there's another quarterback in the league I'd want to have the ball going into that situation than Joe Burrow right now. Yeah, and I, I, I asked Peter King last hour, I said, you got an MVP vote. If we were taking the vote after the Super Bowl and the Bengals won, he said Joe Burrow would be the MVP. Maybe it's him, even if they lose. The fact that you get the Bengal, he gave hope to every franchise, or he put every franchise on notice. Like, hey, this guy got his team to the Super Bowl. He got sacked nine times in a win against the Raiders. Like, uh, pretty amazing, uh, you know, this meteoric rise from, you know, national championship, Heisman Trophy, second year going to the Super Bowl. Heady stuff, man. It really is. And the stuff that he did last week that isn't going to be glorified until maybe we do all the film work in the offseason, like all those third downs where Chris Jones had him and he just slides away and he scrambles away. It's like so symbolic of this team because they were down 24 points to the Chargers. They came all the way back. They lost. They were down two touchdowns to the 49ers. They came all the way back. They lost. They were back in that game with the Packers that they lost. Even their losses, it was like he was a cockroach. Like you could not put Joe Burrow down. He found a way to claw back and everything, and now it's just clicking. I couldn't give any more. And I, I said on Good Morning Football today, there, everyone and their mother has a podcast now. Everyone <laughs> and their mother thinks, you know, I work for a gambling site. I do this. I, I'm, I'm, I'm working on this analytics page. Like, literally, there are 8 billion people doing sports media and 9 million talking heads who just dilute No one took the Bengals before this season. Not a soul. I think that's pretty cool. You're an Ohio guy. you got to appreciate that. Oh, I do. Uh, but I, I, I'm not rooting as much as those fans do deserve this those you know my i'm actually rooting for my friends and family because whenever you would say you were from cincinnati inevitably you would get the following oh the bungles always always so to get there to be proud you got your quarterback you got your wide receiver you got a good running back i go back to september where we thought their head coach may get fired like you know that's how crazy this season's been Um, I'll leave you with this, or if you can leave me with this, the cool spots for us to go in Los Angeles. I mean, you know what's going on. Yeah, Yeah. I'll give you the list. Here you go. Okay. Number one is... Number one is Craig's. It's the old Mater D from yep. Dantana's. He's got a spot now. This is where I saw on TMZ that Kanye and uh, someone else was there. So that must be cool. I'm told Delilah is the hot club. Guys like us will, will mm. not be allowed in necessarily, <laughs> but that is where people go. And the last one is a little place that my guy Walker Hayes sings so beautifully about. It's a little restaurant called Applebee's, and that is where I will probably be most <laughs> nights getting my chicken fingers or mozzarella sticks. Uh does Walker Hayes know that he ruined CBS's halftime show? I thought I thought just the opposite. I thought that those guys were talking over Walker Hayes, and I found that obnoxious. <laughs> yeah, what do I need to hear? I need to hear Nate Burleson say that you know, they need to establish the run. Give me the Walker Hayes. What is Boomer Esiason saying in that segment that I need to hear that yeah, I haven't heard a million exactly. times? Give me the, the Applebee song. Oh, that's great. Peter, thank you, and uh, hopefully we'll cross paths with you in L.A. I would love to see you guys. You got the best show still, Dan. I appreciate you having me on. That's Peter Schrager, NFL Network, Good Morning co-host.